filtration barrier. <clears throat> These filtration barrier comprises inside the endothelial cell, the basement membrane, and the outside is the photocytes. So the inside endothelial cells having the tight junction with basement membrane having the negatively charged and the outside is the epithelial cells or podocytes. Uh, podocytes uh, having the foot processes which interdigitate and prevent to pass larger molecules. So basically glomes is the capillary loop with the basement membrane inside the endothelial cell as we already discussed and outside the podocyte or epithelial cells and uh, it allow passage of specific molecule and excess water into the urinary space. So glomerulonephritis, nephritic or nephritic syndromes are defined as the inflammatory inflammation or damage to the glomerular basement membrane resulting in altered function. And it's a relatively uncommon cause of kidney injury. So what is the nephrotic syndrome? It is defined as the increased permeability of the glomerular glomes, which leads to the increased loss of protein. Normally, urine contains no protein or minimal amount of protein. Whatever the protein filtered through the glomerular basement membrane is totally reabsorbed through kidney tubules. So if all these five things is present, then we label is it as a nephrotic syndrome. What are the things which is uh, five pentad is necessary to diagnose the nephrotic syndrome? If the only one component or two component present, we do not label it as a nephrotic syndrome. So massive protein urea more than 3.5 gram in 24 hour or hypoalbuminemia serum protein less than 25 gram per deciliter or 2.5 gram uh, per deciliter or 25 gram per liter and having the pedal periorbital or sacral edema with dyslipidemia and presence of lipid in the urine. So these five things is very important to diagnose nephrotic syndrome. Otherwise, if the protein is present more than three gram, we uh, the term used is the nephrotic range protein urea. It's not a nephrotic syndrome. And if a nephrotic, nephrotic range protein urea with lip dyslipidemia, then we labeled as a dyslipidemia and nephrotic grain protein urea, but by definition, it's not a nephrotic syndrome. So what is the clinical presentation uh, of a nephrotic syndrome? Patient may present with uh, pedal edema, periorbital puffiness or uh, uh, sacral edema. Later on, it involves the genitalia, and the patient may also present with ascites Refusion and patient complaining of weight gain and uh, tightening of the clothes and some patient will tell you about the frothing of the urine and uh, generalized symptoms is always present like lethargy, fatigue and decreased appetite. So the typical clinical presentation is variable. It depends on the severity of the protein urea and uh, the amount of protein in the urine and duration of the protein urea. Initially, only the periorbital puffiness or pedal or sacral edema. Later on, these all the symptoms, if the duration more than six or six months and the de degree of protein urea is uh, more than 3.5 gram in 24 hour. Uh, so these all symptoms may you find in any patient. Further, the patient with nephrotic syndrome, usually normal blood pressure, but if the kidney function is uh, altered and the kidney is serum creatinine on the higher side, and this will cause the high blood pressure in nephrotic syndrome. Murky lines are the specific line uh, which is uh, present on the finger nails, and it, th these are the vertical lines. It's secondary to the hypoalbuminemia. Patient may present to you with breathlessness, secondary to the fusion or volume overload or secondary to acute kidney injury and also patient present to you with severe leg pains and that will secondary to the deep vein thrombosis or shortness of breath secondary to the pulmonary embolism myocardial infarction 
or white patches around their eyes and that were labeled as a xanthal mass suppose if you are a doctor so you may have the history of a young male patient with complaining of frothing of urine and uh, periorbital puffiness or pedal edema or a 10 year old boy with puffy eyes or a old age female with multiple comorbid and swollen ankles so these are the classical presentation of a, a patient who present to you in your clinic <clears throat> this young male may be according to the age group may be a case of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis or initial as a late presentation of minimal chain disease 10 year old boy may present as a diagnose of a minimal chain disease and this elderly male uh, with ankle swelling uh, ultimately diagnose on renal biopsy as a membranous nephropathy but this is not a hard and fast rule you may find uh, in a young patient with a minimal chain disease or membranous nephropathy also <clears throat> so what is the differential diagnosis of a patient with the present to you as a generalized edema or uh, volume overload signs the so three these uh, two major causes will also uh, causing the edema or involvement of the uh, different sites uh, like congestive heart failure like congestive heart failure or liver disease in congestive heart failure you may find the raised jvp and pulmonary edema on the postural when whenever the patient lie down he may feel more short of breath than on the upright position in these patient the protein urea is minimal or less than 1 gram in 24 hour in liver disease you may find hypoalbuminemia ascites edema but the protein urea is minimal or no protein urea in liver disease acha so the causes of nephrotic syndrome is the primary glomerulonephritis will this uh, as already discussed the minimal chain disease focal segmental glomerular sclerosis most common cause in the adults and membranous glomerulonephritis which affect elderly people Uh, secondary glomerular nephritis secondary to the uncontrolled diabetes uncontrolled hypertension and uh, autoimmune diseases like systemic lupus erythematosus sjogren's disease or different infection like hepatitis b hiv infection vasculitis cancer and certain drug may also cause the nephrotic range protein urea in which the penicillamine gold is inhibitor like captopril and ansets so what are the investigation you may order to ultimately diagnose the nephrotic syndrome first of all you do the usual test like complete blood count urea creatinine and electrolyte and urine detail reporting each and every test will tell you or indicate towards the problem so if suppose uh, if we are analyzing the urine dr in urine dr you may find the 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus depend on the degree of the uh, severity of the disease uh, you may find the protein urea and hematuria or hemoglobin in the urine or amorphous crystal or different other substance you may find in the urine dr report complete blood count <laughs> is important if you are suspecting the systemic lupus erythematosus in which you may find uh, thrombocytopenia leukopenia and you in urea creatinine and electrolyte if the kidney function is altered you may find the high urea and creatinine level with high potassium level in specific situation you may uh, order the different specific test like electrophoresis for to diagnose the multiple myeloma or immunoglobulin level complement level c3 and c4 and auto antibodies to diagnose the anti nuclear antibodies for the sle anca for the 
vaginal granulomatosis or anti double strand dna for sle renal ultrasound is very important test it will tell you the kidney size shape and eco texture of the kidney and position of the kidney and any obstruction hydronephrosis or any stones and it will also tell you the bladder wall whether it's a normal or thickened wall or any abnormal structure present in the urinary bladder ultimately if the clinical uh, history and uh, uh, labs data will suggest the ultimate diagnosis to the is the renal biopsy which tell you specifically histopathologically the cause of nephrotic syndrome so through renal biopsy we may find a minimal chain disease membranous nephropathy or focal segmental glomerulosclerosis in children if the age less than uh, 10 year we do not do the renal biopsy and uh, we first give the steroid trial for 6 to 8 weeks if the on steroid trial patient responded then no need of renal biopsy in children so how will you manage the patient of nephrotic syndrome uh, you daily monitor the urea creatinine and electrolytes acid base balance and uh, keep in negative balance and daily weight charting uh, to monitor the reduction in the weight and ideal weight reduction uh, is 1.5 to 2 kg in 24 hour salt and fluid restriction and uh, treat the underlying cause whatever the cause of a nephrotic syndrome in medical therapy we use the diuretic loop diuretic especially on the intravenous form and uh, if the serum creatinine is within normal limit then we use uh, ace inhibitor arbs steroids or immunosuppressive drug and if the patient present with renal failure may need uh, hemodialysis also uh, these patients are uh, hypercoagulable state and uh, we may use anticoagulation in these patient Uh, ultimately if the kidney failed and not responding to any medical therapy then we plan for renal transplantation so what are the complication of nephrotic syndrome it's increased susceptibility of the infection 20% adult having the infection various type of infection cellulitis uh, urinary tract infection or lung infections or upper or lower respiratory tract infection it, this is due to the decrease serum immunoglobulin level or reduced complement activity or reduced t cell function thromboembolism is also complication of nephrotic syndrome this is disbalance between the procoagulant and anticoagulant and hyperlipidemia is also a feature of nephrotic syndrome it's due to the hepatic excess synthesis of lipoprotein to restore the oncotic pressure so in to treat these complication uh, we are uh, offering the patient to do the encapsulated organism like uh, h influenzae or uh, 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 to vaccinate against the uh, preventable causes also we are giving the uh, low dose of uh, uh, aspirin and uh, statin to decrease the dyslipidemia a spontaneous peritonitis is also a complication of uh, nephrotic syndrome as we already discussed the urinary tract infection cellulitis and these all thing and these arterial or venous thrombosis is secondary to increase platelet aggregation or disbalance between the procoagulant and anticoagulant so what is the prognosis of nephrotic syndrome uh, it's depend on the age of the patient and uh, the time passed uh, till the patient reached to the physician uh, in early, uh, young age child like 8 to 10 year old old age patient with the diagnosis of minimal chain disease it's 90 5% recovery 
basically minimal chain disease is disease of remissions and relapses so we give steroid for 6 to 8 weeks and it will recover 90 to 95 percent without any complication uh, without treatment in focal segmental it's a progressively disease and if it is not respond to the immunosuppressive ace inhibitor or different treatment modalities then it will ultimately leads to reach the end stage renal disease and required hemodialysis or renal transplantation and now we are going to discuss the nephritic syndrome so pathophysiology of nephrotic syndrome is the alteration in the glomerular basement membrane that allow the protein along with the blood into the tubules so by definition nephritic syndrome is defined as the hematuria or red cell cast hypertension oliguria and proteinuria less than 3 g in 24 hour and it's the it's not a slow process is it, it's a abrupt onset usually self limiting especially post streptococcal glomerulonephritis and so patient present to you with cola color urine we called as a hematuria proteinuria patient which is uh, initially on normal with no history of blood pressure or any uh, uh, these patient present with hypertension decreased urine output we term use as oliguria and uh, sometime patient present with flank pain and generalized symptoms like lethargy a short of breath decreased appetite and uh, especially in the post infectious uh, glomerular nephritis uh, the nephritic syndrome may develop within a 3 to 5 days after streptococcal upper respiratory tract infection so what are the differential diagnosis of uh, nephritic syndrome it's uh, uh, malignancy urinary tract infection trauma or stone disease you exclude these all causes uh, till you label as a nephritic syndrome post infectious glomerular nephritis is the leading cause of nephritic syndrome and other primary and secondary causes also which cause the nephritic syndrome is iga nephropathy which is uh, in post infectious patient present to you within a 3 to 5 days but in iga nephropathy patient give history of sore throat two weeks back and after the two week patient present with the sign symptom and clinical feature of nephritic syndrome so this is the difference between iga nephropathy and uh, post streptococcal glomerular nephritis post streptococcal glomerular nephritis patient present within 3 to 5 days and with upper respiratory tract infection and in iga nephropathy patient present to you after 2 weeks other causes of nephritic syndrome is rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis proliferative glomerular nephritis And, and in secondary glomerular nephritis like anexolin purpura and vasculitis so what are the investigation to reach the ultimate diagnosis of nephritic syndrome uh, usually we are perform complete blood count uh, urea creatinine and electrolyte and urine dr so that will tell you the presence of rbc in the blood non nephrotic grain protein urea Uh, hemoglobin urea or even myoglobin urea uh, red cell cast is more important than the rbcs so it's uh, indicate the uh, rbcs come from the glomes red cell cast is rbcs component which is modified whenever the rbcs uh, goes through the kidney tubules other specific test Uh, in a special situation like immunoglobulin levels complement level auto antibodies and uh, to diagnose the post streptococcal glomerular nephritis we do the blood culture aso titer or streptozyme antibodies level again renal ultrasound is very important it will tell you the kidney size shape echo texture position any stone any abnormal structure present in urinary tract or urinary bladder or urinary bladder wall thickening so these all are very important finding which is 
we uh, acquired through ultrasound of the kidney renal biopsy is very important renal biopsy is important to diagnose ultimate histopathological diagnosis of renal failure so this is the red cell cast which is the pieces of the red cell on the tom horsfall protein so how will you manage the nephritic syndrome monitor the urea creatinine and electrolyte controlling the blood pressure fluid balance is very important the key pin patient u volume is uh, daily weight charting fluid and salt restriction is very important and uh, we are using diuretics in a special situation hypertension is very nasty in nephritic syndrome so to treat hypertension is very important we are normally using gas inhibitor or calcium channel blocker if the serum creatinine on the higher side the as inhibitor is contraindicated if the serum creatinine is more than 2.5 g a patient may need corticosteroid or immunosuppressive medication and sometime due to the volume overload or uh, Uh, an uric patient may need dialysis and sometime patient required renal transplant so post infectious is a self resolving and 90 to 95% recover renal function with, uh, within a normal vein uh, other uh, causes of uh, nephritic syndrome is slightly difficult to treat it's basically depend on the severity of the disease and uh, a stage of the renal function with at with that time we treat the patient so this is the classical picture of the nephrotic syndrome in which the you may find the this is the periorbital puffiness and overall bloated face so in summary nephrotic syndrome means pass- massive protein urea with pentad protein urea more than 3.5 g in 24 hour hypoalbuminemia uh, less than 2.5 mg per deciliter uh, presence of lipid in the urine dyslipidemia and edema nephrotic syndromes hematuria red cell cast hypertension and oliguria and these may be overlapped situation this presentation may mix presentation or sometime very difficult to label either it's a nephrotic syndrome or nephritic syndrome so this is my complete presentation so if you have us any question please ask hello क्वेश्चन का रिस्पॉन्स कैसे करना है देखो जरा मेरा फोन भी पावर ऑफ नहीं हो रहा हेलो जी मेरी कंप्लीट हो गई है प्रेजेंटेशन करो भाई चैटिंग ऑन कैसे होगी हेलो वो कह रहे चैट ऑन कर दिया उसमें क्वेश्चन कोई नहीं आया हुआ आपकी मर्जी टाइम हो गया तो कर दे अच्छा कर दें 